Welcome to the soldering tutorial for your Resistance eLearntronics Electronics Learning Board. Go ahead and take your package, open it up, and we're just going to dump out the components. Make sure that you don't lose any of them. Now your packaging may look a little bit different from this bag. Let's go through and see what we have. We have a 9 volt to barrel jack connector. We have the barrel jack which actually connects to it. That's what will solder to the board. Then we have these four hex standoffs along with four M3 screws. Now we're not going to need those until the very end so we can set those aside. Okay, then you're going to have eight three millimeter LEDs. I like to collect them all together so that they're easy to find, put them into a little pile. And we'll set those right into our workspace. You're going to have a double pole, double throw switch, which is my favorite component in all of electronics. And then you'll have a bunch of resistors. You should have eight in total. Now to determine which resistor is which, you'll need a resistance chart that looks something like this. Now your kit should have come with an eLearntronics resistance chart uh, that will allow you to determine the actual resistor value for each individual resistor. Now the way you use this is you take one of your resistors and you're going to match up the band on the resistor to a value in the chart. You'll look at the first band, then the second band, and then the third band will actually tell you your multiplier value. And the final band is what tells you the tolerance. We won't really need that for this application. Okay, so we're going to grab a resistor. And we'll look at the first value of the band. We've got yellow, purple, red, and then gold. So yellow is a 4, purple is a 7, red is going to be a 100 times multiplier, so 47 times 100 gives us 4.7K, or 4,700 ohms. The gold refers to the tolerance, so uh, with gold it means we have 5%, which means that we're going to be within 5% of that value, which is good enough for our purposes. And now we will put up the resistance band chart. Go ahead and figure out the resistance value for each of your resistors and place them in the corresponding sections within the circuit board. And now we have all of our resistors in place so we can start soldering. Go ahead and turn your board over. I use a soldering mat so I keep it just flat on the surface and I'll take my soldering iron and my solder. I'll tin my tip. Now I'm using a fume extractor. If you don't have a fume extractor you should be in a very well ventilated area. What I'm doing here is soldering only one point for each resistor. And you'll see why in just a second. But I'm going to go through and very quickly just tack down each resistor to the board. 7 and 8. Okay, now the reason I did just one point is to demonstrate this concept. I can now inspect my resistors and make sure that they are all lying flush with the board. Then I can drop my board and see that they're still flush. Since I'm happy with the position of each of my resistors, I will come through and solder the other through hole point for each individual resistor lead. Now, you can get pretty quick with this. Uh, feel free to take your time. If you need to pause the video, absolutely pause the video. What you're seeing here is a lot of practice, and I'm still not a great soldering artist, but uh, you get quicker as time goes on. 
So if you're satisfied with your, uh, your soldering, go ahead and clip off each of the leads using some flush cutters. Now you want to be careful. I'm actually doing this pretty stupidly. You should hold on to the lead and then clip it because otherwise the lead can come flying off of the board and potentially hit you in the eye or somewhere else that's very sensitive. I'm, I'm fairly confident with this, but the safe way to do this is to hold the lead and then clip it. Now I save these leads because they're very helpful for uh, prototyping, rapidly prototyping uh, using protoboard. If you don't have any need for it, you can just chuck these in the recycling bin. And you know, sometimes the uh, flush cutters actually, if you don't squeeze too hard, can help you to pick up these leads because they can be pretty difficult to get off the table. And last one. Okay, nice clean work surface. We all want a clean work surface. So now we need to figure out what the next component we're going to solder onto the board is. Uh, we want to use the next most flush. Oh boy. You know what? I, uh, I accidentally soldered, got soldered into a through hole while I was soldering the resistors these two through holes, which are for the LEDs, got solder in them. So I'm going to use my solder sucker. Now, if you don't have a solder sucker, you can also use uh, some, uh, yeah, just go ahead and pop this out. See if that did the job. Uh, you can also use some braided copper, uh, or if you're very handy with a soldering iron, you can actually uh, melt the solder and then push the LED through. Uh, but I highly recommend getting your hands on a solder sucker. It's very helpful, specifically for cases like this. Uh, I can take a few tries here. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling. But overall, it's not, it's not a horrible mistake. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can go buy it on Amazon. Most soldering kits come with these. I mean, it's cheap, you know, $2 piece of uh, hardware. So I don't get to use mine too often, so I'm not, not super great at it, but. All right, so you can see I got most of it out and then I can kind of clip off this excess. You can get some pretty gnarly shapes with the solder sucker. Um, so I think, I think those are looking okay. That looks good, so I'm going to set aside the solder sucker and we'll move on to the next component, which is going to be our LEDs. Now with LEDs, they are polar. They have a long lead and a short lead. What that means is you have to have the LED placed correctly or the circuit will not work. Current will only flow through an LED in one direction. So we have a long side and a, fl and a short side. And then also on the LED bulb itself, we have a rounded edge and a flat edge. The flat edge is the cathode. It corresponds to the flat side, uh, which also is the spot with the little K. So we want to make sure that the flat end of our LED goes in facing the bottom of the board. The flat side of the LED bulb is also the shorter lead on the LED. So the short lead will go in towards the bottom of the board. And we'll just slip through all eight of the LEDs being very careful to ensure that they are all facing the correct direction. Again, if you put these through backwards, the circuit will not work and the LED will not light up. Now it looks like, uh, looks like that through hole still has a little bit of solder in there, so I'll show you how to deal with that. Uh, but first I'm going to take care of the other seven LEDs. Now that they're through, I'm just going to look and make sure that they're all facing the correct direction, and they are. And then I will uh, flip over the circuit board, flat on the surface. And just like with the resistors, I will come through and solder, again, one point only for each of the LEDs. This can go pretty quickly, but if you need the time, take your time. You do not need to rush. Soldering irons are very hot, they can be dangerous. Take your time and only go as quickly as you are comfortable. 
Now that I have the LEDs tacked down, I'm going to tin my soldering iron tip and put it away. And now you can see why we tacked down one side. These LEDs are not perfectly straight. So what I'm able to do now is being, again, very careful, hold the board with my finger on one side, just touch the solder joint to remelt it, and then I can push down with my finger to get that LED completely flush with the board. I'll go through all seven of these LEDs. This can be a little time consuming, but you're not, you're not doing electronics because you want to go quickly. You want to build something nice. Uh, another thing you can do is, uh, and this is a little bit safer, but maybe not as precise, is you can push the board against the table. All right, then go ahead and inspect your work. And looks like I've got, uh, I can straighten up a couple of these still. Almost there. And again, I can't reiterate it too many times. This is very hot, so be very careful. So once you're happy that all of your LEDs are straight, you can come through and re-solder all of the other leads, which will effectively complete the soldering job and completely lock the LED into place. If you need to remove it, you theoretically can, but it's much more difficult to do so when you have to reflow two or more leads at one time. Inspect your solder joints. And when you're ready, come through and clip your leads. Again, the proper way, hold on to your leads and then clip them. If you don't have a nice pair of flush cutters, I highly recommend them. Uh, these are from Hako or Hako, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Uh, they will cut through just about anything, but they, they can get uh, dinged up if you cut anything too large. But they are just absolutely fantastic, and they cost all of, I think, maybe $7. Highly recommend them. It's a great tool to get. All right, so we have almost all of our LEDs in place. Now you get to watch me struggle to get this last LED into place while pretending that I don't have a solder sucker. So I'm going to try to position it. I can get one lead through the first through hole and then just apply a little bit of downward pressure. And you're gonna see why I recommend the solder sucker. And I'll reflow the solder and try to push it through and no dice. Let me try the flush cutters to try to help line this up properly. This is not an easy maneuver. If at all possible, I recommend the solder sucker. But we're gonna try. We're gonna persevere. Sometimes you have to deal with things like this. Uh, tweezers would be better here, but this is what I have handy. Let's see. I know this can be done. I've done this before. It's just pretty tricky. There we go. Okay. So now our LED is locked in there. We'll reflow and we can push the LED all the way in and get it nice and flush. And now it's locked down. And we'll solder the other joint, clean up the first joint. So not impossible, but so much easier if you have a solder sucker. Okay, next we're going to do our double pull, double throw switch. So slide that in. It can be a little tricky sometimes. Some of the leads can get bent. Just like before, we will, oh no. Well, hopefully my, uh... yep, I clogged up the through hole. 
So I went too quickly pulling up the board, but look at that. First try. All right. Make sure your switch is flush, and then you can come in and hit your other five solder joints. Guys, we're almost done. That's the second to last thing to solder. And finally, it's our barrel jack connector. This one's a little tricky because the connector uses uh, slots, but the actual board has large holes. So it can take a little bit of time to properly heat up the through holes and the actual component and then fill it up with solder. It takes a lot of solder. And you also want to be very careful because this will hold a ton of heat. It will stay hot for a long time and it can burn yourself. I have burned myself on it. Be careful. Guys, this is molten metal. It's what solder is. It gets very hot. So we'll just feed in enough solder to completely fill up these joints. Go ahead and inspect your work. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to throw on our standoffs. So you slide a screw through the hole, then take the hex standoff and screw it on. It's pretty simple. You're not going to need a hex wrench or anything like that. You just use your one finger to hold the screw and then screw on the standoff. You don't have to have these, but it keeps your table from getting scratched up. Uh, so I highly recommend them. And quite frankly, I think it just makes the board look a little bit nicer. Whenever I design a board, I try to add a, a place for the standoffs. Okay, here's our last one, which means that it's the one that I get to struggle with. Almost there. And there you have it, guys. Here's your resistant circuit board. Go ahead and watch the explainer video so that you can see uh, how this thing actually works, and we'll walk through kind of what resistance really is. Thanks for watching.